Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper. Today I'm talking about some of the repellent that I'm growing in my garden. Now if you look at this, this is an American beautyberry plant. These purple berries are very beautiful. They're a crude protein, very edible, have a slightly astringent but good flavor to them. I like them. But these leaves are actually a natural mosquito repellent. People used to stuff them up under the bridles on horses to keep the mosquitoes and flies off. You can actually rub them on your skin. Or some people actually make their own homemade mosquito repellent out of them. But it's not the mosquito repellent I'm talking about today. It's my elephant repellent. Yes, you heard me correctly. I said elephant repellent. If you look around my garden, one thing that you're going to notice is for as far as pests and different animals that are raiding the garden is that there aren't actually any elephants coming in here to eat my crops. Now we may have squirrels, we may have squash bugs, we may have harlequin beetles, we may have other things, but there is no elephants here. Some people may chalk that up solely to the fact that we live in North America and there is no elephants in the wild here right now. But another thought to consider is the fact that I'm growing my own elephant repellent. This tree, this plant behind me, is actually a pepper plant. It's got some very beautiful little peppers and they almost look like a goji berry. They're just little guys. One thing about them that I really like is they've got the flavor of about a ghost pepper, yet they're shaped like one of the little pekin peppers from down in Mexico or something. So there's a lot of green ones that's still flowering. I think before it frosts, I'm gonna lift one or two of these probably and bring them inside my house and overwinter them there. But these peppers were originally from Uganda. And in Uganda, the people actually grow these peppers and they actually do make an elephant repellent out of them. So they'll grow a whole bunch of these peppers. They'll, I think, dry them, powder them, add them around some of their villages and stuff like that to help deter elephants from coming in and wreaking havoc on their villages, on the people, on their crops, on things like that. Thus far, I've not been able to determine, you know, what the actual name of these peppers are. So if anyone knows, please feel free. I've done some online research. Everything that keeps coming up is that they grow these in Uganda and they grow these as an elephant repellent, but I can't get a single name out of anything. So these particular ones I'm growing, I started from seeds that I got last fall. Um, somebody had taken a, uh, a trip over to Uganda and was able to get some of these seeds and um, they've been growing them. They thought I would enjoy them and I certainly do. And uh, just like, you know, the um, ghost pepper originally came from India. It was well known there for a number of years and then people in the rest of the world caught wind to it. It quickly became my favorite pepper and kind of took the world by storm as the world's hottest pepper at its time. You know, this is just another one that's been sourced from a different location but is absolutely amazing. So while I don't particularly need my own elephant repellent, that's exactly what I'm growing here. But I think these are wonderful too. I'll give you a closer look at these in my hand. I used to get peppers like this from down in Texas and Mexico, um, little Pekin peppers. Now there was some bird eye peppers that were round and they were very small. And there was also a number that looked like this or just slightly smaller. And some of the plants would grow them facing down. Some of the plants would grow them when they were facing up. This plant here happens to have upright peppers. So on each little stem, the peppers are coming up into the air. I'll give you a close look at that. If you look right in front of my hand, you can see that there's actually three different peppers, but they're all on upright little stems. They are all growing straight up, so they're not a dangler. They don't have a stem that comes out with the fruit below it. They're actually growing upright and kind of more erect right off of the plant. That's how all these are. As you can see, I got them in a little late, so I barely have any that are turning green or that are turning red, like these here. But there's still a ton of flowers coming. So the one thing is if I do lift these peppers and bring them inside, um, they'll continue to fruit for quite a while with anything that was pollinated and I'll be able to get quite a harvest. The biggest ones of these are actually about chest high on me right now. I'm not sure how big they go. I do know I've grown Pekin peppers, which definitely have a different flavor. Um, they're, they're really hot, really tasty, but um, I've grown those and they've gotten probably about five feet or more. 
Um, so this one too, I will give a little taste test just to uh, share that with you guys here. As may not surprise you, with a name like Papa Pepper, I do enjoy peppers. So I'm just gonna take this tiny little one right there. Yeah, you can see about how it is. Give that a go. Man, the part that impresses me the most about these is that that flavor is so close to a ghost pepper. That is absolutely amazing to me. I've, I've tasted a number of different peppers like this. I've tasted a number of the different hot peppers and super hots. <coughs> wow. But that is pretty much, as far as the flavor, I'm not talking about the heat level, spot on for a ghost pepper. Oh man. Whew. The mouth, the throat, the sinus passages. It's amazing too because uh, you know, a ghost pepper, a whole one in a whole sitting. I've done multiple times, no people have as well. But this is like the perfect, perfect amount for that. So the cool thing is I ran into the person who gave me the seeds for these last year and uh, they knew that mine were coming in slower. Um, so they did pick some of theirs and gave me some dried ones too. I'm definitely gonna have some of these that I can save for seed myself. Plus I wanna save the original plant. These ones started off as tiny little seedlings and then they slowly grew Eventually they get up to the height that you see them at now, but if I overwinter them in the house, I can start off with like a four foot plant next year or a three foot plant next year. So rather than starting off with a seedling in the spring, when you start off with a big plant, it'll give me a much longer harvest because it'll reach maturity quicker and it'll give me a lot more fruit just because of the size of it. So that is super cool. Um, I'll give you one last look of it. And um, like I said, you know, the evidence speaks for itself. I'm growing elephant repellent. I don't see a single elephant here. So do with that information what you will, but I think I know what's going on. So you can see the nice little kind of five pointed little flowers all over the place. And they kind of stick up straight more like a shower head. They're coming up and then they sprout down um, or more like a sunflower. But then when the fruit forms, it does stick up like this green guy here right in the middle. Put my hand behind it, there you go. So that's pretty cool. Um, definitely like this plant. The flavor has blown me away. Really impressed with that. Um, looks like they can put out hundreds and hundreds per plant, which is good, especially when you're dealing with something smaller. I'm excited to see what this does in the future, especially after overwintering it, and definitely blessed to be able to have it. So I plan on growing this one for years to come. I'm um, not sure if I'll have enough you know, seeds to offer some up if anyone else is interested, but I definitely want to get these into people's hands in the future too, um, especially for those of you who are hotheads or who do like ghost peppers, because uh, this is the closest thing I've ever found, and that really excites me. Um, mouth's still going pretty good. It really is. My nose is still draining a bit. But um, don't know what the Scoville heat unit is on these. Don't know what the actual name of them is. If you guys either do some research or if you already know, please comment below. Let me know what these elephant repellent peppers are because uh, I'm really curious. And even the person I knew uh, who got them only knew that they were you know, from Uganda and maybe that they grew them for elephant repellent. I'm not sure, I might've found that out in my research. I don't exactly recall. But that's that, I'll see you guys next time. And uh, as always, if you can grow things that help keep you know, dangerous animals away, that's pretty smart too. Um, so if you do live in Africa and you grow these, you might know a little bit more what I'm talking about. I'll see you guys next time, Papa out.